Okay, so in the last video, um, we were looking at the, the layers of the circle that make up this template, um, this unit circle template that you can download from the folder um, for the 5.3 unit circle lessons. And if you don't have paper, uh, you can absolutely draw one of your own um, on whatever you know um, paper you have handy if you don't have a printer. But you can, if you lay your your circle down um, in the center if it depending on how big it was that you made but you can see how these four angles 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2 how they represent the four quadrants of the unit circle so the first quadrant is uh, going to be pi over 2 so we'll go ahead and label that pi over 2 um, starting at 0 and so that was 1 pi over 2. Then the second quadrant will be 2 pi over 2, and 2 pi over 2 reduces to just pi radians. Okay. Then as we go down, uh, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this bottom angle then here is going to be 3 pi over 2. And then back around to 2 pi is the whole circle. So 1 pi over 2, move that over. Okay, 1 pi over 2 radians, 2 pi over 2 radians, 3 pi over 2 radians, 4 pi over 2 radians is 2 pi. And those are your four quadrants of your unit circle. In quadrant 1, okay, so this is quadrant 1, x's are positive and y's are positive. Any ordered pair I put um, in between here is going to have a positive x and a positive y. Okay, then in quadrant two, okay, anything from pi over two to pi, um, the coordinate of those angles in quadrant two, the x's now are going in the negative direction because remember the unit circle is centered at the origin and the radius is one. So if I go one in the x direction, this coordinate at 0 2 pi is 1 comma 0. If I head in the negative direction for x though now it's a negative 1 comma 0. So see how my x's become negative over here um, in quadrant 2. Uh, as I go up though that 1 for the radius that's going to be the point 0 comma 1 up here at pi over 2. So in quadrant 2 my x's are now negative but my y's have stayed positive. So I have negative comma positive in quadrant two. Okay, then put boxes around these so we don't mistake what they are. Okay, then in quadrant three, quadrant three is from pi radians to three pi over two radians. And quadrant three is gonna have negative x's and negative y's, because now I'm going down here one, so this is the point zero, negative one. So in quadrant three, all of these ordered pairs are going to have a negative x and a negative y. That's quadrant three. And then in quadrant four, the last quadrant, okay, now we are going from three pi over two to two pi in quadrant four. The x's are positive again, but the y's now are negative. So positive and negative. Okay. And those are the four quadrants. Um, we'll come back to them when we start doing problems with sine and cosine and that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this overhead light here real quick, actually, to make this glare go away. Oh, that's better. Okay, back here we go. So that was our yellow pi over two layer, right? Four sections. Now we're going to switch over to the pi over four values, which would be right here. And if I lay that down, remember that was cutting our circle into eight sections. So remember uh, the number of sections divided by two gives you the denominator. So if I have eight sections in my circle, the denominator is going to be four as I count around the circle. So starting at zero, I'm going to go to one pi over four. That's right here. Then two pi over four reduces to pi over two. Okay, let me put this back at zero, zero. Then this one would be three pi over four. Right? Then 4 pi over 4, which is the same as 
pi. So I'm, since my circle is a little large, I'm going to count around now by pi over fours. So this is zero, one pi over four, two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two. That makes this one three pi over four, then four pi over four, which reduces to pi. Then this would become five pi over four, then six pi over four down here, um, at the bottom at zero negative one, six pi over four reduces to three pi over two. Next would be seven pi over four, and then eight pi over four, which reduces to two pi. So that brings us back the whole way around. And I just realized I have that in a weird spot because radians are in the first part. Okay, so zero, two pi, one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, eight pi over four. That takes us the whole way around the circle. Some of them coincide with those quadrantal angles that we got from chopping up the circle into four quadrants. That's, that's fine, that's just a perk. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the layer that had our pi over See, let's do pi over three, I think, right? We chopped it into six circles or six sections next. So that's the orange. Yeah, there we go. So now for the orange special angles, this layer, we cut the circle into six pieces. That makes the denominator three as we count around the circle. So zero pi over three, one pi over three, then two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three. 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3 takes us the whole way around. So if we follow that and fill those in as we go, this is 0 pi over 3. This will be 1 pi over 3. Then 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3, which is pi. Then 4 pi over 3. 6 pi um, or four pi over three, five pi over three, and six pi over three takes us back around here to where we started because six pi over three is two pi. Okay, when we fill in those orange values here from our six piece circle, okay, now that gives us everything, all of the angles and radians um, that we need for the unit circle except for these four that are closest to the x-axis, right? When we lift that up, see how everything's been filled in with radians except for these four angles right here. Okay, those we get from the last layer that we did, which I think was purple, where we chopped our circle up into 12 pieces. And those 12 pieces, um, if we remember, cut the denominator, uh, to get the denominator, cut that in half. So the denominator for 12 pieces in the circle will be six. And we count around the circle um, going by sixes. Everything is going to match what we already wrote down as we reduce. The only ones that we're still missing are these four right here, right? Pi over six, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All the rest of them we, we really do already have. But just for the sake of, of showing the relationship, like how we're counting and layering these things together, I'm just going to talk through them one by one. So this first one starting at 0, this is our 1 pi over 6. Right? That's 1 pi over 6. Then 2 pi over 6 would be right here. 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 is going to be quadrantal, and that reduces to pi over 2. Okay, so that was 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. Then comes 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. Then 5 pi over 6 is that one that we were missing in quadrant 2. So we'll write that one down, 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 reduces to pi. Then 7 pi over 6 comes next. Right, so I fill that one in on my circle. 8 pi over 6 is 4 pi over 3. Then 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 3, which brings me to my last angle in radians on this circle, which is 11 pi over 6. 
right? That's the last one I needed because 12 pi over 6 brings me back to 2 pi, which is one lap around the circle. So now we've filled in the whole unit circle in radians. Okay, if I can find another color, let's see if this green works. Okay, then we could go around the circle in degrees, and degrees generally are pretty easy for people, so we won't um, have to, you know, cut and paste circles to get uh, the idea of where those come from. So starting at zero, right, there are 360 degrees in the whole circle, so zero, 360. And half of 360 is 180. So when I come over here for the top half of the circle, right, that's 180 degrees. Half of 180 is 90. So that brings me 90 degrees. And then I can count um, as I go by uh, 90 degrees. So 1 times 90, 2 times 90 is 180, 3 times 90 is 270, and 4 times 90 brings me back to 360. Okay, so that's my uh, four pieces. Now, if I want to do the eight pieces with degrees, I take the 90, divided that in half, and that means pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. And then I can count um, and multiply my way around. So 1 times 45, 2 times 45 is 90, and then 3 times 45 is going to make this one 135. There we go. Okay, then uh, let's see, that was 1, 2, 3, 4 times 45, um, then 5 times 45, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6 times 45 is 270, then we've got 8 times, oh no, that was 6, so next is 7 times 45, which should be 315. And then um, 8 times 45 gets us back to 360. Okay, then we've got to divide um, our circle by 12 sections so we can fill in these in between. So if I uh, take my 360 and I divide it by 12, that's going to give me 30 degrees for each one of these um, sections as I go around. So 1 times 30 is 30. Then 30 times 2 is 60. Six, or 30 times 3 is 90. 30 times 4, 120. Then 30 times 5, 150. 30 times 6 is 180. 30 times 7 is 210. Okay, then um, another, let's see, I lost track. 30 times 7, 30 times 8 is 240. Then 30 times 9 is 270. 30 times 10 is 300. 30 times 11 is 330. And 30 times 12 brings us back around to 360 degrees. So that's going to give us all of the angles in degrees the whole way around the circle. Um, we already had the layer with the radians, and we have the uh, positives, negatives for our quadrants labeled. We've got um, the ordered pairs for the quadrantal angles, but we still need to fill in these ordered pairs for uh, the special angles that are not quadrantal. And uh, we'll do that in the next video. Okay, see you in a minute.